Hey, it's Joshua Vergara. What's going on, everybody? I want to talk about laptops for a bit because I finally upgraded my laptop. Now, the last one that I had, I used for about two years. And two years ago, it had an i7 processor. Uh, it also had the GeForce 970M. It was an Ultrabook with a 13-inch screen. And honestly, all of those specifications by now are pretty outdated. And I realized that when I started to see that my rendering times on Premiere Pro were much slower than many of my peers. So I spent the last number of months just sort of powering through with the laptop that I I had knowing that I wanted a new one that was not only more portable, but it also should be able to do my creative stuff even faster, and I wanted to game on it whenever I really wanted to. Enter the Huawei MateBook X Pro. So you've probably heard from a number of different places that this laptop is considered one of the best of 2018. Now I am here to confirm that, but I also want to help you get geared up for 2019 and get you geared up in the new year with your own MateBook X Pro. That's right, we're doing a giveaway. But in an effort to share the love, I also wanted to get a mate for my mate. So I'm teaming up with Danny Winget, one of my favorite people in tech and one of my best buddies. And the both of us are going to give our perspectives on the MateBook X Pro and why it works so well for us. And then we're going to give you a chance to win one of two MateBook X Pros via our video. So make sure you stay tuned and watch how you can be part of the giveaway. At first glance, the MateBook X Pro is already an eye-catcher. The aluminum frame makes the laptop only get up to half an inch thick when closed. And then, around the sides, you can also see that it has ports that on other laptops you just may not get. On one side, you get a full-size USB-A port, and then on the opposite end of it, you get two USB-C ports and even a headphone jack. One of those USB-C ports is also a Thunderbolt 3 port, which becomes very important later on. When we open up the laptop, the term sleek continues, because that bezel is sleek, to say that it is very minimal. The screen is 13.9 inches at 3000 by 2000 resolution. It's also an IPS display, so it's pretty bright, but it still does a great job of exuding all of its colors. It is a touchscreen, and I will admit I don't use the touchscreen too often, but there have been some situations where I just rely on that more than using the touchpad. You might be wondering how this bezel is even possible on this screen. Well, the camera has been moved to a different location, which we'll get to a little bit later, and it's a little bit hidden. We'll get heavier into the gaming later, but I will admit that this screen is just so much fun to game on, but it's also great for media, to watch Netflix and YouTube on, and also to get a lot of work done, which is definitely something this laptop is geared for. And part of the reason why it's so great for productivity is because of the keyboard. There are butterfly switches underneath each and every one of these keys, giving it basically a mechanical feel. It's not going to feel like a full-size mechanical keyboard you would use on like a desktop, but it definitely feels better than most other chiclet-style keyboards. Above the keyboard is the power button that also has a fingerprint reader embedded into it. Now what's cool about this is that you don't have to keep your finger on it for the entire boot process if you're just powering up the computer. You just leave it on there for a little while, but then you can take your finger off because your fingerprint has already been registered and it will just get you straight past the lock screen and into Windows 10. Of course, below that keyboard is a large touchpad that can be used for all of the gestures that you find in Windows 10, even things like three finger swipes back and forth to go back and forward in the navigation. To the sides of the keyboard are two speakers that are enhanced by Dolby Atmos, and these were kind of the biggest surprise of this laptop. I normally have a Bluetooth speaker on me because I want to have something playing in the background all the time, especially when I'm traveling in like hotel rooms and whatnot. But with this laptop, I have felt less of a need to have that speaker on me because I could just play my content through the laptop and it's able to fill the room really well. Something my fatter laptop from before cannot even get close to doing. With that, we can get into the internals. This is the i7 edition. There is an i5 edition that comes with less RAM and no discrete graphics, so clearly I'm using the top of the line edition here. It's an eighth generation i7 that also comes with 16 gigabytes of RAM, and as far as graphics go, this does use the NVIDIA MX150. So where does this land in my daily usage? Well, the main thing that I wanted here was a faster render time in Premiere Pro for a faster workflow, but I also wanted to have better performance all around. One thing to note though is that render times are more of a CPU process than they are a graphics process. So with the 8th generation i7 in the MateBook X Pro, I've been able to get massively better render times. The graphics processor, the MX150, can help a little bit in the rendering process, but that's going to be mainly for graphical work, which I don't do too much of on my channel, but I do plan on doing a little bit more, and it's good that the MX150 can handle that. But the MX150 can also handle some light gaming. Maybe I'll have some emulators on here or some uh, older games in Steam that can run at full settings at a consistent 60 frames per second. I've played games on this laptop for hours on end while waiting for planes or in cafes or in public uh, without it connected to a power source because the battery life can actually make it go for a while. 
If you're not doing too much, only web browsing or maybe doing some word processing, this laptop can go for up to eight, maybe nine hours. When it came to video games like Yakuza 0 via Steam that I was playing on here, I was able to get about three hours, which is actually a pretty good stretch of time for one big playthrough. And then somewhere in the middle is my actual usage every day where I'm doing word processing, um, some media viewing, and also a little bit of video editing where I was able to get five to six hours. Obviously, you might want to play with that little slider in the battery icon a little bit to get the best, or rather, the most longevity out of this laptop for each and every one of your sessions. To get to the next level though and play those current games, I had to get an extra tool, and that's called an eGPU. That's where the Thunderbolt 3 port comes in. An eGPU is basically a graphics card that is a standalone product that then connects to a laptop like this through a Thunderbolt port. By connecting this laptop to the Gigabyte Aorus, which is the one that I picked, I'm able to upgrade the MX150 in the laptop up to a GTX 1070, which is what's inside the eGPU. And that allowed me to take the gaming to the next level. Consider for a second that you have the 3000 by 2000 resolution display, and then I'm playing games like Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which is incredibly recent, at full settings comfortably. So while I have some games that I could play on the road or just wherever I am and I wanted to have a little bit of fun with this laptop, when I'm at home and I plug it right into that eGPU, I'm able to play all of the latest games without much trouble at all. There is one thing to consider though. This Thunderbolt 3 port is a two lane port rather than a four lane port. So you're getting 20 gigabits per second of data rather than the 40 that you could get if the Thunderbolt port was at its full capacity. That actually has been okay though because the eGPU was still able to give me top performance and be able to play games at full settings like I just said. It's only really when I use the eGPU with extra things like external monitors or extra USB peripherals that that little bit of a bottleneck might occur but hasn't happened for me at all just yet. As that might be one of the only flaws that I've had in my daily usage of the MateBook X Pro, I can give you one more, and that does have to do with the camera. We're finally going to talk about the webcam that is hidden in a little button at the top row of the keyboard. There's some pros and cons to this camera. The pros are that since it's in that spot, the screen can be as bezel-less as it can be. And also, if you're one of those people that puts tape on your cameras for privacy, well, this is a built-in way of hiding it. The main con is that the position of the camera is not the most flattering. It's looking up at you, and also if you're typing at the same time as you're on a video call, then all of your fingers are going to be right in front of the camera blocking you from view. So if you're going to get into a video call, maybe lay off of the keyboard and kind of move back a little bit and just enjoy talking to the person on the other line. The quality of the webcam may not be the highest either, but again, for just casual video calls, it is good enough. It's certainly good enough for me to enjoy talking to Danny Winget on the other line, who's going to give a little bit of his perspective on the MateBook X Pro. After you get done watching, go ahead and hit that like button. Go ahead, go right now. Okay, so after that, then come through to the channel and watch why I think that the MateBook X Pro is still amazing in 2019. This thing was released almost six months ago, but this thing could go toe to toe with any Ultrabook that's on the market right now. And this won't be the last time that you'll see me and Josh together on the video. We're gonna do some cool collabs in the future. So see you soon, peace. I'm still honestly astonished by how much I can do with a laptop that is this thin, this sleek, this portable, and has this much screen for me to enjoy. And with that, the MateBook X Pro is definitely something I'm happy to take into 2019 to be able to do for all the videos that you might see me have on YouTube, but also for all of my general endeavors, like playing some games and catching up with all of the games that are coming out right now. So now it's time to share the joy with all of you. Danny and I are going to give away one MateBook X Pro each, and you can do so by going to the link in the description down below where you can see the terms of our giveaway. And with that, good luck in the giveaway, and remember to subscribe to both of our channels. After all, that is the way you get entered into the giveaway. And remember to hit some likes on our videos and to get into the comment sections down below to have a discussion with our communities about all the videos that we're making, not only on computing, but on general tech and more. Keep it tuned to both of our channels. You can see the links open up right now and we'll see you on the next one and until then i would just remind you to enjoy your tea everybody